one of the most common terms that a second year undergrad hears but does not understand is the concept of continuum. This concept is the foundation of key engineering tools such as computational fluid dynamics and finite element analysis. In this video, you will learn about continuum and how to quantify the same using the nuts and number. Let's first learn to identify a continuum. Now in this image, you can see a cup of water with 10 points. Now these are the points where I can calculate the density of water if I want. Now if I zoom in between the first two points, I can introduce eight more new points. Now, if I zoom in between the first two points, I can add more points between these two points so that I can calculate the density there as well. Now, I should be able to do this recursively as long as I find more water between the first two points. As long as you are able to do this, your system is continuous and you can say that you are in continuum. However, at some point, this assumption breaks and you will have to deal with individual molecules of water which are held together but can still move around. When you are in this zone, you are definitely not in continuum. Through this exercise, you can imagine that you can have the same cup of water in a continuous mode or a discontinuous mode. If your engineering analysis is being done on the entire cup, then the continuum assumption is pretty valid. However, if your engineering analysis is done at a level where you have only a few thousand molecules, then you cannot use the continuum approach. That being said, few thousand molecules is not a very engineering way to figure out if continuum should be used or not. So to do this more quantitatively, engineers use something called as the Knudsen number. The Knudsen number helps us in identifying the validity of our continuum assumption. Knudsen number compares the mean free path of the molecules against the characteristic length of the system. If Knudsen number is 0.1, it means that our engineering domain is just about 10 times bigger than the mean free path. Mean free path is basically the distance that a molecule can actually travel before hitting another molecule. If nuts and number is very small, say 1e minus 6, that means our engineering domain is at least a million times larger than the mean free path. In general, engineers deal with continuous domain or the continuum approach. Most of the mathematical equations that you study are valid only when the domain is continuous. All right. I hope you learned what continuum is from this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.